there is an easier way to turn 3D prints into solid metal castings. And all it takes is a little more 3D printing. Today we're going to talk about match plates. Well, what they are, how and when and why you should use one. And of course I'm going to show you one in action. I'm going to cast something using a match plate. If you want to make many of something quickly, like if say you're selling it on Etsy, or you just need a pile of identical something for a project you're working on, this is what you should do. First off, why am I talking about match plates right now? I have an online course where I teach people how to sand cast in solid metal using a 3D printer for tools and patterns and stuff like that. And one of the students is doing a cool project where they need a bunch of identical really cool castings. The part is a complex shape, uh, there's a hole through the metal, it has some core inserts, the parting line is not flat, it's kind of a, an organic thing. You can totally do that using traditional methods. Use cores, something called coping down for the uneven parting line and everything, but it's kind of complicated and it would be fairly time consuming. And the more steps you have, really, the more chances there are for something to go wrong. And to do that identically, like 20 times in a row, a match plate can solve all of that. So, match plate in action here, what am I going to cast? Uh, at some point I mentioned I'm making a 3D printed respirator fit to a scan of my face. Here's a, here's a sneak peek of the prototype. And uh, the, out, the output valve here, I printed up a grill to go over that. Looks better when it's covered up, right? This is the file I was working on when the student asked for this for this video and this explanation. And uh, this, so this is what I use. It's got uneven, an uneven parting line. It's not flat. It's got holes in it. Uh, there aren't any cores, but it is, it is paper thin. So hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the future. Now when I made the video, I wasn't actually planning on casting it. I just wanted to be able to show, to use something to show how you lay out a match plate and add the runners and, and in gates and stuff and avoid all the pitfalls of, of 3D modeling, things like that. And I was more trying to explain how to avoid those, the common traps, um, especially with the uneven parting line. And then I thought, you know, if I don't print that, everyone's gonna think it's ridiculous. Like I'm, I'm full of crap or something. So I printed one. I designed it to go with my, my standard hickory flask here, which I've made videos about. Admittedly, it's much too large for this project. So I had to print the match plate out on a GK3 Ultra, the really huge one. I love these huge printers. Please, somebody make one that's a meter, like a meter, two meters. If I can print an entire kitchen table on it, that's almost big enough. Anyways, I ran into some issues with the printing. You can see it, it pulled free of the build plate here. I didn't anchor it quite hard enough on the bottom. Other than that, everything looks okay, and it, it warped slightly, but this is where the flasks clamp on. It's not going to be an issue, you will see. So there, you can model up a match plate and print the entire thing, even with a resin printer. And then I thought, you know, if I don't actually cast this thing, everyone's going to think I'm full of crap. What am I going to, I'm going to make a pattern and not make one in metal? That's ridiculous. Admittedly, nobody sends me comments like that. Those comments all come from inside my own head. And if you make, anybody who makes a bunch of stuff, they, they have that that voice in their head, that imposter syndrome-y voice. The number one cure for imposter syndrome voice, in my experience, is to make a YouTube channel. Because if you're actually truly an idiot, the internet will tell you. This goofy green resin is a Uniformation ABS-like translucent green. It's what I had in the printer at the time. Uniformation wanted me to test it out, and I think slamming a sand rammer into it over and over and over is a pretty good test. Uh, in my experience, it is not the toughest ABS-like resin out there, but it does print about the best. The coloration too looks really nice, which is why I printed, I'm printing the mask in it. Uh, it, looks, it looks like it's made out of emerald or something, right? Could, I could be a supervillain. The lamest supervillain ever. Clean breathing man. Anyways, in normal sand casting, uh, you have a pattern that you ram in the sand. You have runners and end gates, which I also form in 3D printed tools and a spin trap. Flip it over, ram up the other side. There's a pouring basin former that I also 3D printed. It gets more complex when you have an uneven parting line. It just it just complicates it. It's not it's not super difficult to do. But a match plate makes it way easier. A match plate goes between both flasks, and it has the pattern with the runners, and the end gates and the spin trap, if that's your deal, everything, the uneven parting line, it's all formed together. You don't have to do any of it. I wanted to talk you through the ramming up process while I was doing it, but unfortunately, I sound like this. This is all gonna have to be in voiceover. I am not using a voice modulator right now. One of my children brought home the yearly school plague. And I'm now sounding a little like James Earl Jones, but less cool. Though I suppose I could do like, I could do a radio show like this, huh? But I, mean, I got a face for radio. Am I right? Welcome to Deep Voice. Paul has a cold story time. This broadcast brought to you by kids who never wash their hands. In tonight's broadcast, NyQuil induced low voice story time, occasional coughing fits, and Old Man River sung somehow lower than it's supposed to be. <coughs> <coughs> I suppose I should really test this, uh, this resin, huh? 
I don't even have a reason to hammer it more right now. Yeah, it's not broken. You can see I'm not ramming up one of these flasks on the table at a time. They're both clamped onto the plate. Ram up the bottom, flip it over, ram up the top. I did use a tapered sprue former and a pouring basin, but everything else is printed into the match plate. If I had more sand and like 10 more of these flasks, I could ram them all up one after another, save a bunch of time, and I could be sure every single one of them was identical. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, it's dark in there, but it's very clean looking, I assure you. The tapered sprue and, and pouring basin former you really can't get away from anyway if you want like really good quality castings. But still, doing this mold is way faster and more repeatable than doing it the old fashioned way. There is a catch. There is a catch, which I will get to at the end after you see how this goes. I'm casting this in ZA12. This is the zinc aluminum alloy I mentioned in a recent video using an electric furnace I also mentioned in a recent video. And this is gonna be proof that this stuff works. If you're using this metal in this furnace, I recommend setting it to 500 degrees Celsius. That tends to be a bit hot for this metal. You want the pouring temperature to be as low as possible for it to fill the mold. Any higher you go, you tend to get uh, like a coarser texture and shrinkage issues and whatever. But remember, this part is literally paper thin. Even this one I printed in opaque resin is still translucent. That's how thin it is. Let's hope that doesn't cause a problem. Foreshadowing, like I'm not recording this after the fact. If you're interested in learning sand casting and you have a 3D printer, you can join the course right now. It's since this is as recording, holiday shopping season, it's on deep sale. You can get the coupon code for the sale by signing up the email list uh, in the link in the pinned comment. The course is designed to take you from total noob, never metal cast anything in your life, to having the tools, knowledge, and some hands-on experience to make uh, whatever you want with sand casting. And it's not just a video course. I personally help you. I give you feedback. I, I make videos explaining things to you like this match plate deal. And the point is not to give you a bunch of projects, but to teach you how to do it well. I'm not talking about the porous, crusty looking castings you see all over YouTube, especially in my earlier videos. So speaking of well, how did I do here? This thing is so thin, I can cut the runners off with some clippers. And that thinness did indeed come back to bite me. I didn't take this thing all the way to like a gloss polish or anything. I, I kind of like seeing the sand cast texture. Plus I can see the polygons pretty clearly this way. And that's kind of neat. I also wanted a chance to show you exactly how the part came out and not try to hide any issues by like grinding them away or uh, camouflaging it with rough sand texture. So how did we do? Well, we can see the uh, glaring elephant in the room. It did not fill there. If you'll excuse staring into the sun here, uh, that lines up very nicely with a paper thin spot. You can actually see the light coming through. There's another one right there. Why didn't that one do this? Well, that's where the metal entered in. There and there. So the metal was much hotter when it got there. And as it's going through here, this is like sheet metal. There's very, very little, little cross-sectional area of the metal flowing in and a lot of surface area. So it's cooling the entire time. There's something else that I suspect is responsible. And we can see if we look over here, see all these little lumps? All the little lumps and bumps? Well, though that's support material. I think the support material there was kind of warping away and I, I made zero compensation for that. I think it made that area a little bit uh, less even in thickness. There might be, these might be thick and thin spots. I'm sure that can cause an issue. There's also visible support scars over here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see shiny things on camera, but you see these lines at the row of dots. That's support material on the other side of the match plate. I mean, these, these horizontal lines, those are in the prints too. I've been getting those with this, this slicer I'm using. I think I, think that, I, think I used Chitu Box for this, and I, I really need to update it. But yeah, that's kind of upsetting. At least if, it, if there was going to be a hole in it, I wish it had looked cooler. You can see from the way the metal looks around the edge that this was definitely uh, metal cooling off. It almost looks like a cold shut or something. There's like a wave of metal running here, and this leading edge froze, and some more of it went around the freeze spot. Maybe this was just an extra thin area. There's a book I read years ago on sand casting that had a quote in it that said, don't cast sheet. Well, this is like sheet metal. It's paper thin. And if you were going to make this in a mass production thing, you would probably stamp it out of sheet metal. So if you have something that really should be welded up out of sheet metal or something that should be forged, don't, don't try to cast everything just because you have metal casting equipment. Although this, you can kind of see the polygons. That's really cool. I like that. That's a neat stylistic choice. Another flaw you can see right here. That was me being a little too careless with the Dremel, cutting open the, the flashing from these holes. You could see light through them, and the one, one and only other casting flaw, which I could have ground out, but I didn't, because, you know, honesty, I guess? Laziness, it's, let's be honest, is down here. That's like a little air bubble or a tiny sand grain. 
Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed with that. I mean, I can grind it out, but still, like I'd rather it just cast perfectly. That's either sand uh, that got washed in, like I wasn't super careful cleaning up the mold, or it could have been an air bubble. It looks like sand to me. It doesn't look like air entrainment. There must have been a grain of sand that I wasn't super careful about removing. Yeah, so that's a bummer. Everything else though looks really good. Now I don't see any, any major issues or minor issues, um, except for, oh no, what's that? The backside too came out pretty good. You know, I have a tiny bit of sand trap there. Um, same there, and man, that is that is just so weird, those, those lumps. That, that was in the print though. And now we should probably see if the thing fits, huh? It's got these little notches down here that fit into the, the chin, the pokey chin bits. There we go. Pretty cool. I was gonna drill some holes and then I have like brass screws. I thought that would look really cool. Neat. Let's see if it fits nice and tight. If there's no wiggle, there's no slop. Yeah. I got a cool, I got a cool grill now. Although I'm thinking I'm probably gonna use the translucent green one because then you can actually see my mouth talking. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Which which one's cooler looking? So, if it's so much easier to use a match plate, uh, why not use a match plate all the time? You could, but there is a catch. It takes way more time to make one of these things. The 3D modeling of the match plate took longer than 3D modeling the part itself. And that's on top of modeling the part itself. I probably could have cast a few of these the traditional way in the amount of time it took me to model this. That doesn't even include the printing time, which admittedly is not bad. I printed it while I was off doing other stuff, but it would be much worse if you were making one of these out of wood. You can't do the carving while you're asleep or at work. So if you want to cast like one or two of something, it's not worth your time. If you need a whole run of them, this is the way to do it. This is why match plates are standard practice in industrial casting, because they're making hundreds of something. So should I have done this with the match plate? Um, no. I'm not making these things to sell. I don't need a bunch of them. I only need one and metal might be too heavy on my face. Like I put it on a gram scale. It is lighter than the filter, than one of these filters. So it's not that heavy. Maybe if I did one in aluminum or, or bronze, bronze even heavier, but it's way cooler looking. I could do either or both using that same match plate. A match plate is still probably overkill. And so is printing a two part mold out of a, out of a super special ultra high temperature resin. So I can like die cast, I guess, another one. Um, stay tuned for that, uh, for a future video. But next time, I'm gonna be sand casting something else. Not with a match plate, it'll be with a multi-piece mold. It is, however, lathe related. See you there.